Hi guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to the desktop for the first in a potential new series called House Rules. You see, for the last year and a half or so, I've gone over some 77, it is at the moment, sets of rules for my rules breakdowns. And I'm starting to come towards the end of that series. So I'm looking for options what to replace it. And I mentioned on one of the videos about this. Potentially going through the rule systems, which I've looked at, and picking out the best ones for building a house rule system of my own. You know, choosing skill systems from this, dice rolling systems from this, etc, etc. So, although I've still got probably a couple of months more uh, rules breakdowns to do, I thought I'd put out this video to get an idea of what I might be doing and see what people think of a very rough first episode. So, starting at the very beginning of a house rule system is the dice mechanics. It's what you need to know. Well, I'm saying dice mechanics, but the resolution mechanics. So, if you want to do it with pulling cards out of a deck, whoever pulls the highest. If you want to do it by flipping a coin, you can do that. But most role-playing games roll dice. But within that, there's a large amount of variety. So if I move my dice over here a second, we can drag out some rules. So we've got the standard Dungeons and Dragons. So this is a system where you roll a d20 and you get bonuses and you're rolling against a target number. Now, a common mistake made is that if you roll a 1, you automatically fail. If you roll a 20, you automatically succeed. That only happens in very strict occasions. It's not a rule across the game. But that's the mechanic. You're rolling a dice and you're adding to skills from it, or from skills to it. Then we've got things like Call of Cthulhu here, where you've got skills which are percentage, and you're rolling a percentile dice, and attempting to get under that skill to see whether you succeed. And those are both rolling one dice, modifying that result, and then testing against a skill. So the skill is either boosting it or you're testing against a skill. Some systems have the percentile dice, like Rollmaster, where you're rolling the percentile dice and you're adding bonuses to it and you're trying to get over 100. Other systems work different ways. But that's the standard rule system for Dungeon Dragons, Cthulhu, those kind of things, where you're rolling a dice and you're modifying that and comparing to a target number. Then you've got things like the Star Wars role-playing game, where your skills are counted out in a number of dice, D6s it uses, and you're rolling those and adding up the total together. So we've got 9, 10, 14 there. And we'll be comparing it to the target number to see whether this we succeed. We're rolling more dice, but essentially it's working the same way as Dungeons & Dragons. Then we've got systems such as Vampire the Masquerade here, where similarly you're rolling a number of dice, but each dice is being rolled against a target number. So let's grab some d10s, and we are saying that the target number is a 6. So we are going 1, 6, 2, 6. We have two successes. And they show the level of success we've got. And then we've got things like Shadowrun, which works in the same fashion, except it's using D6s and the st target number is static. You just need a different number of successes to achieve things. So you'll have a threshold. So you've got a skill of, we'll say, four dice, because that's what we've got here. We roll the four dice. And we're looking for fives and sixes. So we have one six, so we have achieved a threshold of one. Now, a particularly tough thing might need three or four successes to beat. But often you can achieve those by continuing to do the, the task. So in Shadowrun, if you're trying to pick a lock and you need four successes, you can spend multiple rounds attempting to do it, and you don't fail unless you totally fail to get any successes in one round but you're rolling the dice against a target number. Now, out of all these systems, I probably like the Shadowrun one best because it allows a lot of flexibility in there. 
you're rolling a bunch of dice, but all you're looking for is successes. So no successes there. We know straight away whether you've succeeded or failed. And the number of successes you're getting, or, well, they're counting towards the overall success of the skill. So sometimes you'll just need one. If you're shooting a gun, you only need one to hit. Extra successes on the dice roll are increasing the damage you do. But for something like picking a lock, it might have a threshold of four or five, which you would need to build up over several rounds. So I really like that. Now, rather strangely, I've run the Star Wars role-playing game for the past 20 years, where you're rolling a bucket of dice and adding them together. But that system is really pretty clumsy, especially when you're getting to large amounts of dice. It's not beyond the realms in uh, Star Wars for a character to have nine dice to roll. You know, somebody who's a good gunner in a ship will have a seven dice skill. They might have fire control on their gun, two dice, so they'll be rolling nine dice. And then when you're getting to Jedi who add their four skills to their combat skills, they'll have a lightsaber skill of eight dice. They'll have four skills of seven dice, so they're rolling 15 dice total. And then you're adding all that together to get a target number. Now, then you're comparing that against an enemy if you're shooting at them, and they need to beat that number. It gets very unwieldy. So that's why I'm putting that system to the side. I also put the systems like Cthulhu and D&D aside, because they are too cut and miss. There's certain skill levels you get to, you know, in Call of Cthulhu, when you've got a skill of 98%, which is very unlikely, but you're 98% likely to succeed in something. You're very unlikely to fail. And failing at silly little things is key in role-playing games. And you don't want to have everything so difficult. So you've got one person with a skill at 98%, so you decide, well, because they're doing it in a hurry, I'm going to take 40% away. Well, everybody else only has the skill at like 50%, so 40% off that, they've only got a 10% chance of succeeding. Everybody else gets messed up because of that one person. But rolling the multiple dice seems to be far more flexible and forgiving. You can roll lots and lots of dice while still having a chance of failure because you can still roll the dice and they all come up low and you just get no hits. Also, the Shadowrun system has your critical successes and critical failures. So if you're rolling Edge in the latest editions, or earlier editions allowed you to do it anyway, you would roll a six and you would roll an add. So you could get more successes randomly. And ones would take away. In fourth edition later, you need to get 50% of your dice pool as ones for it to be a critical failure. But... That's the core mechanics. Most role-playing games obviously vary in it slightly. I've just used these samples because these were the books on hand and I kind of am familiar with these games and I like the systems they use. But going forward as the series continues and I move on to other parts of the rules, that's the core mechanic I'm going to be working my prototype role-playing game around. It's going to be based on D6s. I do like D6s because they're common. Uh, people usually have a lot of them, so it's very handy. It's going to be a set target number rather than rolling and adding them all together. And that's going to be the mechanic. And the number of successes will allow you to stage up or stage down your level of success. And certain tasks will require a certain threshold to succeed. Anyway, I think I've witted on for quite long enough, so thank you very, very much for watching. Please let me know what you think of this style of video, whether you think as I get into other elements it will get more interesting, because obviously this was a very basic one, but please comment down below and let me know what you think. But as always, most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.